Okay, welcome everyone to part three of our birdhouse design tutorials. Part one, we designed uh, our birdhouses in Fusion 360, uh, assembled it together, and in part two, we took our individual components, laid them flat, and uh, created a DXF file. Okay, uh, and in part three, we're now going to take that DXF file and import it into our CNC machine software called Easel. Right. So I'm going to start off by pointing out that this is the website that you will be accessing in order to get on to Easel. Uh, you're, go you're going to need to sign up for that. So type in this web address and you should be able to just follow instructions to sign up for it. Okay. And next what I'm going to do is insert or create a new project and then import my DXF file. So I'm going to create a new project. Now, before I import my file, there's a few things I need to explain. Make sure first that you are in the inches uh, units here. So if you're in millimeters, which I think by default it goes to millimeters, so you, you'll want to switch it to inches. This is kind of your design window, and over here is sort of your preview window of what it would look like on your piece of wood. Now, first thing we're going to change is we can keep this as a birch plywood. Um, birch is a harder type of wood and we are going to be using a harder type of plywood. Uh, and so we're going to keep birch plywood, but we're going to change these dimensions, right? We don't want 12 by 8 inches. I mentioned to you guys that we want to use a 20 by 20 piece of plywood. That is approximately, now the plywood is actually, it's not really a quarter inch, it's actually closer to 3 16 it's five millimeters. All right, so I want you to type in five mm and it'll convert it automatically to inches, which is 0.197. So that's important that you're not putting quarter inch here and that you're typing five millimeters to be more exact. Okay, extremely important. Um, in terms of the bit size we're going to use, keep it simple. Let's keep this as our eighth inch bit that we're going to use and we're not going to change anything currently in the cut settings uh, besides what's there by default unless I state otherwise, okay? Which I may be reviewing some of our cut settings to maybe speed up our cuts a little bit as long as we maintain our, uh, um, our accuracy of our cuts. Okay, so um, I'm just kind of panning over. I'm using my trackpad. I'm using two fingers on my, uh, on my trackpad here to kind of pan my screen. And then I use my two fingers as well to zoom in or out. Okay, so I can see uh, as much of the 20 by 20 as I can, okay? Um, and so next, I mean, you may want to call your project something, so that's one thing that you may want to do. You can see that you can actually design your own things here in Easel. You can do all sorts of designs, actually. It's really good for signage. It's really, really useful for that. Uh, you don't really need Fusion 360 to do a lot of the types of signs that you see out there. Um, so you can play around with those tools. But for today, we're actually going to click on import and we're going to import a DXF file. All right, and we're going to upload a file. Okay, and we are going to upload our DXF. Here it is here. and click upload. And you can see that flat file that we created is going to show up here, which is great. Uh, lines mode, keep it as joined and cut path. I believe that we should probably change this to outside. So the cut path is like, do you want the bit to cut right on the path? In which case it's gonna cut into our part a little bit or cut on the outside of the path so that it nicely just hits the edges to the exact dimensions that we want. So we're gonna to go to outside right now and we're going to import. And there it is showing up here. And there's a few things that I wanna go over with you. First thing is I can click on any one of these and when those little arrows pop up, okay, I can move our part around. Okay, so you can kind of make everything fit a little bit nicer. 
Now, you've probably also noticed that when you click on a shape, that you can choose how deep to cut, right? So because we're cutting through our entire piece of wood here, you wanna make sure that this uh, slider is right down to the bottom for the full five millimeter cut. And you can see here, because we chose it, it said cut outside shape path. Okay, so I'm happy with all those. Um, I'm not gonna change anything in the shape uh, tab here. I'm not going to uh, mess around with the width or the height. I wanna keep everything as is. But I will check off use tabs. All right, so I need to explain that when you are, um, when you're cutting something out of our piece of wood using our CNC machine, uh, what happens is, is as you're cutting, if you don't use tabs, so there's going to be little tabs that are on these edges here. If you don't use those tabs, your part can move as it's cutting and destroy your cut. So you want to use tabs to keep your part firm in place as you're cutting. So it's actually going to cut these tabs into it. So instead of like cutting right down through the piece of wood, let's say on this straight line here, it's actually going to leave a little tab there so that your piece can stay in place as it continues to cut. And so the default length here of our tab is a quarter of an inch with a height of just under a tenth of an inch, so a 0 0.08. Um, and, you know, I would keep those as, as your defaults uh, unless otherwise stated. Now, the quantity of tabs, do you really need four for this particular part? Probably not. You can probably get away with two, okay, because it's not an overly large part. Um, so you can probably get away with two there. So if I click on this, the tab or the little yellow little lines there. Ooh. May need to zoom in to actually be able to move that tab because that tab is not in a good spot where it is. Okay, there you go. Now you can click on it. I would probably move it. You wanna have your tabs on straight edges as much as possible. Okay, so I'd say that those two tabs there will suffice in holding my part into pl in place as it's cutting, all right? Because it's not a very big piece. So I'm happy with all this. Cut outside shape path, depth all the way down, and then two tabs there. And what you're going to do is make your way through all of these pieces, make sure, and if you want to choose multiple pieces, just do a zoom window going left to right and you can select multiple. Be careful there, because if you just try to move this one piece here, it'll only move the one, and you don't wanna do that, right? Oops. Okay. Now, there's something I wanna show you here. I just wanna move this into a better spot. Okay, so for this particular part, you're gonna go through these one by one, right? So again, click on it, there's the depth, cut outside shape path, and we're gonna use tabs again. And this time, again, you might be able to get away with just uh, two tabs here because it's such a small part. I'm gonna put two. And I'm zoomed in enough to be able to hold this into place. Actually, let's put them up here. Okay. But watch this now. That's for the outside, cutting out the outside. But for the inside, we're going to change something up. Okay, so the inside, I'm going to click on the inside there. I still need tabs for sure. Except I don't want to cut outside the shape path. If I cut outside this path now, I'm going to be cutting into my part. And I don't want to do that. So for inside, for features where you're cutting holes, like such as this, you want to cut inside shape path. Watch what happens. You see that? Cut outside shape. It looks bigger because it's cutting, the hole ends up looking bigger because it's cutting it on the outside. So it's including the diameter of our uh, bit as well. Whereas if you cut inside shape path, then you actually have our part uh, that we're looking for here. So any holes, any paths for holes need to be cut inside shape path. 
any outside paths are cutting on the outside. Okay, and then use tabs on this as well. And again, we can probably use two. Okay, and that should do the trick. So you are going to go around and do this to every single different piece here. Okay, remember that wherever you're cutting holes, right? And and you can select multiple, right? So if I can, if I do a zoom window to select all of these holes here through my base, I can change those all at once, cut inside shape path, right? Use tabs, okay? And I believe here we can probably also get away with just two tabs. Okay, now because these holes are so small, um, I believe we actually don't even need tabs. So for these particular holes, now my eighth inch bit is 0.125, right? It's 0.125. So I believe we made these rectangles a length of uh, 0.25. So double that of our drill bit. Okay. So it looks like it's not even going to try to cut out the shape. It's literally just going to do two passes to try to uh, remove what's there. All right. So it's not actually going to be cutting out what seems to be a hole. It's actually just going to be clearing out that pocket. So I don't even think tabs are really necessary. You get the idea. Um, I've gone ahead and done the rest of these parts. Okay. You are going to click on each one individually uh, and fix the depth of cut. If there's holes, you're going to change to inside shape path as opposed to outside shape path. Um, and you're going to place your tabs accordingly. Okay. So that your part doesn't move. If it's a larger piece, you at least need four tabs. Okay, for smaller pieces, two tabs will likely be enough. Okay, so keep that in mind. And remember that our drill bit is going to be an eighth, and our piece of wood will be birch plywood that is 20 inch by 20 inch by five millimeters, which is 0.197. And at any point, once you're done there, uh, you can simulate the how long it'll take in order to uh, create your cut. So this is showing that it will take approximately 24 minutes, okay? 24 minutes to complete, uh, which isn't too bad, okay? Like I said, don't uh, really move anything within the, um, the cut settings right now, okay? Make sure you keep those. I actually think I did move these a little. I think by default, it's at 40 inches per minute, in which case if I simulated it, you could see it added five minutes to the print because uh, I basically slowed things down by 10 inches per minute. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Part three of creating your birdhouse.